one of the things that I've already noticed about this Balearic Island, and I've only been here for about 12 hours, is the many and varied ways that people choose to pronounce it. Some people have come to Majorca, some people have come to Mallorca, which is a bit pretentious, isn't it? And some people have come to Mallorca, and that is my favourite pronunciation for this film. Mallorca gets invaded nearly all year round, two million British visitors alone. So it's surprising that there's room on Palmer's pavements. But I'm spending 24 hours in the city to admire its original tower blocks and shaded Moorish splendor before heading out. And according to the local newspaper, I'm in very good company. Now, I had been told that Mallorca was the haunt of showbiz's legends, and now it's true, Liam and Patsy. They're here with me in Mallorca. Well, they're not exactly with me, but I am hoping to bump into Patsy doing a bit of window shopping in the elegant heart of the city. If she fancies buying a couple of new outfits, she won't be disappointed. The shopping district is sandwiched into the old town, so you're never far away from, say, a 700-year-old Moorish cathedral. It's very awesome, isn't it? It's very Spanish. I wonder if Liam and Patsy have seen it yet. Money always does it. The city is geared up for an energetic outdoor life, so be very careful crossing the road. And be warned, everything shuts at one for the siesta, so it's back to the hotel for me. Now, there's something very interesting going on with Palmer's tourist policy, because in an attempt to raise the tone of the kind of person who comes here, they have said that the only new hotels that can be built in the area have to be luxurious, Five star. So you get things like this. It's very, very new, but it's built to look like old, and it's lovely for a siesta. Down in Magaluf, their policy has been somewhat different. In the late 1980s, they decided that they wanted to get rid of all the hotels that they didn't like down at the kind of bottom end of the tourist market. So they simply blew them all up. Not good for a siesta. Refreshed and relaxed, and it's time for some strolling and waving. Hola. Lovely. And time for more refreshment at Abaco, a small, minimalist kind of place. Well, I lied. Abaco is flowers, fruit, swaggering candelabra. It's a bit like entering a 17th century boudoir. It smells like, um, it smells like one of those candle shops, you know, the ones that you always think, how on earth do they survive? So many of them. It's got a lovely poopery thing going on. Oh, thank you. Uh, can I just have a glass of Palmer? Glass of Palmer? Yes. Thank you very much. Drink again. Everyone else is with a partner. Abaco's baroque splendour screams romantic night out, so do come with a friend. You know, Palmer is absolutely blooming lovely. It's civilised, it's quite calm, it's very pretty. It's got this little kind of razzmatazz going on too. And I'd say that probably most of the visitors who come here are the older ladies with their vanity cases full of anti-aging products instead of young people with their ghetto blasters and loads and loads of noise. And that suits me just fine. Don't really want to go, but hey, there might be a whole new Mallorca opening up tomorrow. Heading inland from Palma, you can take the train to Soye. Not many Mallorcans use this train because the visitors pack it out. But treat it like a train back home. Arrive early if you want a seat. Transport around the world is fascinating, isn't it, when you know a little bit about it? If you go to Hong Kong, then you find that all the buses there are London buses. If you go to Cuba, then all the cars are American kind of 1950s Chevys. And you come here to a tiny little island in the Mediterranean, and they imported this train all the way from San Francisco. Now, I think we may well have stopped at the photo opportunity, and I've heard about this. It's when everyone goes, wow, cameras! Well, maybe they're not moving at quite that speed, but I think this is photo opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sometimes in Mallorca, it's very easy to think that you're never going to be alone. Wherever you go, thousands of other people are there. And I have found myself doing that kind of tussing. You know, God, look at the tourists. And then you have to go, oh, I am one of the tourists. I jumped off the train at Soye to meet Valerie Green, a walking guide who I'd been told nurse one of the island's most famous poets. Now, this is the first time since I arrived in Mallorca that I've actually only been with one other person. Yes. As you've seen, it hasn't really taken us that long to get away from everybody. Just behind the perimeter is the real Mallorca, the peace, the quiet, the mountains. So is it true that you nursed Robert Graves? Yes, I did. It's quite a long time ago now, but he was, he was a sweetie. He really was. I've always, um, you know, all the things that I've kind of read about him make him sound so much larger than life, like yes. him jumping out a, of the window. He was quite a character. <laughs> he really was, yes. <laughs> Valerie suggested that I go on to Dea, where Robert Graves lived and died. It's now very smart. The village looks like it's just had a manicure, and most of the people staying there look like they've just had a manicure too. So in the 1960s, Dea was meant to be the place where lots of creative artistic types gathered, you know, for a sense of community escaping from the constraints of modern society. And now it appears to be a town that's dominated by boutiques and shops selling straw products. By now, the beaches were starting to beckon, and you're never far away from a stretch of Mallorcan sand, over 300 kilometers of coast to choose from. Puerto Bellensa is on the north coast, and its gentle beaches and quiet pace make it a firm British favorite. In fact, I was probably the only person from Blighty who hadn't been there before. So is this the first time that you come? We've been here now, I think, six times we've been to uh, Palenza. Um, my sister-in-law, she's been twice. We're the regulars here. <laughs> it's got its own unique character, and it's, I think it's different from all the other resorts in Mallorca, in that, well, for all the resorts that we've been to, it seems to cater more for families than for, I suppose, teenagers or people in their early 20s who want everything to be open all day and all night. <laughs> I thought I'd be really clever here and take the boat over to the northern headland of Formentor in order to avoid the crowds. Now, Mallorca just gets better and better, and you can tell that it's an island absolutely dedicated to tourism because it's got the best postcards in the world ever. Look at the real water in the beach scene, and look at the incredible real sand in the sand beach scene. It's very good, isn't it? Now, when I got to Formentor, I realised that I wasn't that clever, and I certainly wasn't that alone. Well, this seems to be about uh, the largest allocated space that I can find today on the beach here, which is about marking out my territory. Don't come and sit in it. There we go. That's about... Three foot wide, it'll be fine, I don't need any more space. If you do want more space, though, it's not hard to find it. You, too, can stay in one of those amazingly beautiful villas perched on the hillsides. They're called finkers, which are farmhouses turned into hotels. Maria Antonio runs this one, and she is determined that her guests will see some of the Mallorca that she grew up in. So here you get draping bougainvilleas, lemon groves, silence, and organic Mallorcan food. That'll cost you £100 a night. Five years ago, I decided to make it to one hotel because my family uh, lived for a long time in another country for my husband's profession. And I decide to make it the hotel. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So, as Lloyd Graceman would say, let's look at the evidence. Mallorca is a beautiful island. It's got remarkably cheap bits, it's got remarkably expensive bits, it's got very unspoilt bits, and it's got very built up bits. 
and it's got people who live in castles. So who would come to a place like this? Well, the answer is everybody, and they're all having a very good time. Morning. Um, it's about five o'clock in the morning, which is an ungodly hour to be awake on holiday, isn't it? And the reason why I'm up at this time is because I'm going hot air ballooning. When the alarm went this morning, if somebody had said, hello, Miss Clough, would you like a trip to the moon? I would have said, no, thank you, it's quite sure I'll go back to sleep, so it'd better be good. Bye. I was actually very nervous about going up in a piece of material with a Bunsen burner underneath it, but it has to be the most impressive way to see the island if you can spare 75 quid. And that's it from my trip to sunny Mallorca, so from a very hot air balloon, very high above Mallorca. Goodbye. <laughs> and that's it from me here in Peru and from the travel show for this week. Next week, I'll be much closer to home. In fact, in Wales, exploring the Pembrokeshire coastline. And Jim White and his children will be on safari in South Africa. Hope you'll join us then. Goodbye. If you'd like any more information about the destinations in tonight's travel show, there's a fact sheet available. Send a large A4 size self-addressed envelope with a 50 pence stamp to PO Box 191 Stockport SK2 4PN. Enclose a cheque or postal order for one pound made payable to the BBC. All these details can also be found on CFAX page 615.